Shalom everybody. I am Alevsky here from Chabad Family Programs with a, another revolutionary thought from the Lubavitcher Rebbe on, uh, on everything. But here's a, here's a really cool idea. Everyone's looking for a diet, right? The perfect diet. A lot of people are looking for that perfect perfect diet. So, in this past week's Torah portion, it was Akev. Um, working with my gimbal over here. Um, so the Torah, Moshe Rabbeinu is relating and describing things that happened to the Jewish people throughout their stay, their 40 year stay in the desert. And one of the things he says, he reminds the Jewish people about their eating of the man the heavenly bread that fell from the heaven daily. And in relating this, the words the Torah uses, where Moshe said to the Jewish people, says, Vayan All right. Adonai Eloheinu Adonai Echa. Amen. We are in this together. We're doing a Dvar Torah on the run. Thank you. There you have it. So Moshe tells the Jewish people, he says, Vaya'ancha, and he kind of made you, didn't make things uncomfortable for you, uncomfortable for you in the desert. Vayar Ivecha, and he made you hungry. Vayachilcha esaman, and he fed you the man in the desert. So here the Midrash talks about this and says, you want to hear the whole thing? I'm with you. <laughs> okay, so we'll, walk, we'll run together. So the Midrash tells us that the choice of the words of the Torah, Vayancha, Vayarivacha, he made you hungry. God made you hungry, and he gave you the man. So he put, they put the hunger right next to the food of the man, the manna that came from heaven. And the Midrash says, Lechem re'avon natan lehem hakadosh baruchu. Food of hunger God gave them. And the meaning over here is that food that makes you hungry. It wasn't food that satiates. It wasn't food that satisfied. It was food that made someone hungry when they ate it. So the question is why? So the simple understanding that is out there that kids learn in school and we kind of know, more commonly known, is that because the man had no texture, you could, it was just the same thing every day and you can imagine what you wanted it to taste like. That was fascinating, but because it didn't have a texture, it didn't look like food, it didn't feel like food, the people weren't satisfied with it. So it didn't really make them satisfied, although it gave them the nutrition that they needed. That's the simple understanding. The Rebbe, the Lubavitcher Rebbe, takes us to a different level and says as follows. He says, there's two kinds of bread. There's lechem, min ha'aretz, like we say, in our blessing over bread, hamotzi lechem min haaretz, and there's lechem min hashemaim. There's heavenly bread. So he says, what's the difference? A defining difference is that every food and everything physical has its specific dimensions and characteristics, and every food is different than the other in its nutrition, in its taste, in its form, in its shape, in its feel. In all its characteristics, it's different. And it's measured and measurable in relation to other foods. And when you eat bread, that's all you're eating. You're eating bread, you're not eating a fruit. And you're getting the nutrition that bread has to offer. And there's also some waste that you're off. Take care. You can see it on Facebook. Chaim Baruch Alevsky, Facebook. Never met him before, but there's another Jew running along, learning Torah in Central Park. So, so every food has its unique characteristics that makes it different from all the others. And there's also some waste involved where the food is not the parts that the body doesn't need, it gets rid of. In contrast, there's the heavenly food, the manna. The manna had in it an element of infinity. It came from heaven 
It was otherworldly, practically, technically, but it also had some otherworldly infinite elements in it, in characteristics. First, the one, the two that we know of are one that it could taste anything you wanted it to taste like, as mentioned earlier. You just thought of the taste and the taste arrived in your palate. And number two is that there was no waste in the mind. There was no, it was completely perfect food and there was no need to discard any of it. Our bodies kept it all. So there was an element of infinity in the man, and that's the difference between the physical food and this heavenly food. Says the Rebbe, this is the reason why regular food satiates and this heavenly food didn't. Revolutionary thought. Says because it's a, a creative thought. Because if it's a physical, if it's in the, a physical food that has all the physical characteristics that you can measure and grasp and ingest and digest, that's all you need. You have it, you completed it, you completely grasped it, you consumed it, it's yours, and you're satiated and you're happy with it, you're comfortable with it. But when there's something that you cannot grasp, that you can't finish, you can't complete, like the man. So what happens is the man, when they ate it, they tasted a little bit of the infinite, of the eternal. And because we are limited human beings and we can't grasp the man, the infinite, he says we were left wanting, we're left hungry, we're left with a longing for more. It doesn't fill us up because we can't grasp it. We can't put our minds or our stomachs around it. And that's why the man left people hungry. That's why Moshe in the Torah says, Vayar Ivecha, Vayechilcha Saman. He made you hungry. By eating the man, we became hungrier. That's one level. Now the Rebbe takes it a deeper level as we go up the Central Park Hill, the big hill right behind us, says the Rebbe. There's a different kinds of, there's another kind of food of, that we ingest. And that's called, that's wisdom, chachma. Chachma is also compared to mazon, food. Just like we eat food and we ingest it and it becomes part of us, part of our flesh and blood, so too, when we learn something, when we study something, it becomes one with our mind, and it becomes one with us. It becomes part of us. So here we have a parallel between physical food and spiritual nourishment, which is wisdom. Says the Rebbe, in this dimension of spiritual food, we also have lechem min ha'aretz and lechem min ha'shamayim, and the same effects that the other physical food had. How so? It says, Lechem min ha'aretz. Food from the earth represents wisdom and sciences and philosophies and understandings that mankind made up, initiated, developed, and they're limited. They're the measured, measurable, a quantity. It starts here, it ends here, and here's how you grasp it. You can categorize it, you can make a table of contents, and you can and you can you can grasp one piece at a time and completely grasp it yes. until you know it well yes. and then you move on to the next one. And when you eat it, you're satiated. When you understand it well, you feel good about yourself. I got this. Whatever it is, if it's a math or a science or any other philosophy, any discipline or philosophy that's related to the world of wisdom. Unlike the Torah. The Torah is lechem min hashamayim. It's bread from heaven. It's not measurable. It's infinite. And it includes everything about our life. It's not one category that you can grasp. 
and say, oh, I got this one. It's everything from our history, prehistory, current, past, present, and future, and everything in between about our character, character traits, and every person can apply the Torah a little bit differently in their own lives. It's infinite. So too, when we study the Torah, we'll never feel completely satiated because we're touching the, the, the divine. We're accessing the divine and we can't grasp the whole thing. Therefore, we'll never feel satiated, but we just feel longing. We want more. When you learn Torah, you end up wanting more. The Rebbe says a fascinating thing also about the after effects of learning the other sciences and Torah. He says when you learn something else, once you grasp it, you feel accomplished. When you feel accomplished, this can bring a sense of haughtiness, of the opposite, of humility, of conceit. I'm so cool. I got this. Unlike the Torah, that the more Torah you study, the more you realize how far you are from really getting it. And it brings the true humility, the opposite of what the other disciplines bring. Finally, to wrap this up, the Rebbe says, within the Torah itself, you have lechem min ha'aretz and lechem min ha'shamayim. You have bread from the earth and bread from the heaven. The revealed, the revealed aspects of the Torah, the Jewish law, the practical application of all things in the Torah, the rituals, the, what we call halacha, the Mishnah, the Talmud, all of those are part of the revealed aspects of the Torah. It says in there, because it is also measurable, it seems to be measurable, this is what I need to do, this is how I do it, and it could be that's it. So we might get a sense of accomplishment and and even haughtiness that I I got this I got this part of the Torah down pat I'm good to go in stark contrast to the deeper meanings of the Torah the Pnin Yuta Torah the inner light of the Torah which we relay here on these running commentaries all the time otherwise known as Hasidus or Kabbalah the mystical teachings of the Torah as illuminated by Hasidus. These are obviously not within our reach to grasp completely. They're spiritual, they're godly, and we realize, we recognize without any effort that no matter how much we grasp, we really don't have it all. We don't have a grasp on it. And that brings us to be humble. That brings us to humility and to be ever more open to learning more from God. God bless you. Hope you understood and appreciated and grasped some of it. And please share. Thanks.